Chief Meteorologist McCall Friedags found out how vital it is for you to be situationally aware with the help of a simple test. GPS technology. Head northwest toward River Park Drive. Has undoubtedly helped when it comes to advanced warning of severe weather. I have your guys' app on my phone. Okay. That's how I know. But has it caused us to lose touch with basic geography? If you look at one University of Alabama study, it appears they do. Most people participating could not find the county they live in on a map. They had no situational awareness. Who owns a map anymore? We rely on our GPSs. Um, we rely on our Google Maps on our cell phones. Is that true for you and for most of us? Are we making ourselves vulnerable during severe weather? We've had the ultimate wake-up call in the Dayton area. It's time to pay attention. Since flood, severe thunderstorm, and tornado watches are issued by county, not cities, knowing where you are on a map is very important to staying safe. So I hit the streets with a county map in hand to see if people actually knew where they were. I pulled out my gear, marker in hand, and one question in mind. Do you know where you are? Yes. It's in what county? In Montgomery County. I believe Montgomery. Montgomery. At first I felt relieved, but I dug deeper, and what I heard next was alarming. If you were to look at a map of the state of Ohio, would you be able to pick out where Montgomery County is? No. I probably wouldn't. Monica wasn't the only one. I'll try, but I don't think so. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Maybe in a general area. A few were more confident. I think I could. Oh, yeah, I can do that. So I put them to the test. Uh, like right here. It's right here. This? Here. It was right here. Here? Close. I asked nine people to pick out their home county on a map of Ohio and only two got it right. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I really need to study yeah. the map to find out where Montgomery County is. Now imagine you're out of town and unfamiliar with the area you're in. That's even more dangerous. But when you're on vacation or on a business trip, you might ne not necessarily know what to look for um, to reach a safe place. That's exactly what happened to this family as they were driving south on I-75 through Dayton on Memorial Day. They were completely unaware a catastrophic EF4 tornado was in their path. I don't know how all we walked away with was scrapes and bruises. This piece of steel pierced their SUV. It was literally that far from puncturing through her rear seat where she was sitting inches away from killing their daughter inside. I think we pay attention to the wrong things in so many instances. What's, what, again, what's, what our technology is showing us rather than what our environment is teaching us. In Ohio, I'm paying a lot of attention, but in West Virginia, no. Most people I spoke with told me they use the WHIO weather app when they're away from home. I look at your weather app every morning. But what if you did not have your smartphone with GPS location? Uh, well, if I don't have your guys' alert thing on my phone, I turn the TV on. And that's where I come in. With Live Doppler 7 radar, I can pinpoint storms down to your neighborhood, even your street. Um, I would know if you said it was in Kettering. I would understand if you knew if you said it was in Miamisburg. But you may not always be near a television, have a smartphone in hand, or a radio to listen to. You could have no power at all. You need situational awareness. Situational awareness is critical. I know to pay attention to the sirens. So I go by the Doppler radar. Plus, I watch you in the mornings. And that means always having access to knowing where you are. For the locals. You folks who okay your seat locations? Here at the Frays and Kettering. Have a good time tonight, folks. Rick Morton might be just as popular as most of the acts. Friendly, always there for you. Rick has the gift to gab. Ah, uh, you're back again, I see. Oh, yeah. So where do you want to go tonight? You want to go back over there? Not sure he's ever met a stranger. Yeah. It's been a few years, well, welcome back. Right. Rick was never one just to sit around. <laughs> but going on 25 years now, sitting is Rick's daily ritual, but not by choice. What up? Rick is 60 years old. When he was 35, he hurt his back lifting a 10-pound bag of charcoal. Then during back surgery to fix a herniated disc, the disc shattered and he wound up paralyzed. Okay, you guys are in orchestra B. Eventually, he went back to his job at DHL in Wilmington. But in 2009, DHL left. And left Rick without a job. I can tell you. 
talk to you. With no job, Rick struggled to find his purpose. I sat in my house for almost two years doing nothing. Watching the idiot box and, and eating food. The idiot box is what he calls a television. Got close to 350 pounds. Never did he know, nine years later... You can tell I talk too much. I that idiot box would want to point our camera his way. First time here? Or? Rick wanted to get back in the workforce, be productive. You know, we went through job interviews, open interviews, job fairs, phone interviews. So in 2013, Rick decided to volunteer in Kettering, hoping some networking would lead to a job. Never did find a paying job through all that, but instead found so much more. It's like family here. From day one, they treated me with open arms. He also volunteers helping senior citizens at the Kettering Connection. The city said Rick is, quote, probably the city's biggest advocate. He fits right in. He's like the phrase ambassador, you know. And in 2019, Kettering honored Rick with the Mayor's Volunteer Award. It verifies itself why you speak to people. It really do. He's a nice guy. In this day of Facebook, texts, <laughs> and tweets. All right, have a good time tonight then. Rick still believes in the old-fashioned way of doing things. I'm just a people person. I'm just having a ball. Easy to see how he's making a difference. And if Rick has his way... I'll be here another 30 years still volunteering and, and working. It's just the way life goes, so I'm not giving up. And only if we had more Ricks... Have a good one. ...in the world. James Brown, New Center 7. Rick also said he's grateful for his wife and son who have always supported him. You can learn more about Rick on our WHIO free streaming app. You'll find it under Making a Difference. Our streaming app is available on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire TV devices. How many people do you know? Let's see what we can get done. Who go to work every day. This is really special. And can say this. It doesn't even feel like a job. Judy McLeod, or as the kids call her, this day. has been in the same spot here at Chaminade Julienne High School for two decades. Even has had the same number on the wall. But all of this never gets old. Hey, I live it every day. I... She never knows what is going to happen from one day to the next. Oh, I just love it. It's, it is the greatest job in the world. To understand Miss J's obsession with her job at CJ, you have to go back to 1987. She was a junior at CJ, and her principal came to talk with her class. And so I said, when are we going to have special ed at CJ? And he said, uh, never. Let's just say she did not like his answer. Start coming up with your intro. Miss J went on to become a school teacher with Dayton Public. And then... In... 1999, I got a phone call and they said, we're going to start a program at CJ. That program was special education. The very same program her old principal said no way to more than a decade earlier. So what facts do you have? What Miss J went on to do was create one of the most unique... Keon, focus. ...special education programs of its kind in the state and the country. It's called Kuvali. She believed integrating kids with special education needs into regular classes and extracurriculars, and it would benefit every student at CJ. It's the best thing to do in the world, is to work with kids with special needs. Students thrive on the one-on-one -on -one instruction. Anybody got a second to run down to the mailboxes? But it is not just about what these students learn in their textbooks. That also means setting these kids up for success in the real world. Every year, her students put on this luncheon for staff and other CJ supporters. No five-star dining here. Peanut butter and jelly on wheat. More your mom and pop small town family restaurant. This sort of person-to-person -person interaction is preparing her students for life. Got to be fast, fast, fast. Oh, no one like you, Miss J. This is what you do in a real world. From a simple bag of chips, right down to scooping the peanut butter out of the jar, it's her recipe for life. I want people to realize that kids with disabilities are first kids. They, they have the same wants, desires, and dreams everybody else does. Kuvali has far exceeded CJ's expectations. It has more than 100 students this school year, and there is a waiting list for next year and beyond. What are they asking? And when I ask students to share their thoughts on Miss J... When I say Miss J, what, what comes to mind? Um, loving, funny, helpful, 
She's a great person. Like, she's kept me on track. It, like, even when and if I fall off track, she's there to put me back on. When you need to be put in your place, Miss J will put you in your place. She tells me what to do like my mom does a lot. And, like, she still, she loves us in a certain way, and she very much shows that. Like, if she yells at us too much, she always says, I'm sorry, I love you. It is that love for her alma mater and her students that drives her. I eat, breathe, sleep, coovily. That's, and at the end of the day, they give me more fulfillment than anybody else. Just do not ask Miss J to make any more PB&Js. Peanut butter and jelly is not my favorite. My favorite. Life's lessons, according to Miss J. I'm like done with peanut butter and jelly. I'm done. Good luck finding that in any textbook. I hope your lunch was good. James Brown, New Center 7. I don't know if I have a title. <laughs> and at Bob's stage in life. I'm 82 years old. <laughs> he does not really need one. Interesting story about how Bob got here to the Bridges of Hope Emergency Homeless Shelter in Xenia. Bob's wife, Dorothea, battled cancer 28 years, and in the spring of 2017, she lost that fight. My wife was uh, gone, and uh, I didn't know where I was going, what I was going to do. Bob was lost, depressed, so he stopped by to see a friend and counselor at Hospice of Dayton. She said, you need to stay busy, and you need to stay around people. He left that day and made his way back to Xenia. He had passed this old school building a thousand times. He had pretty much forgotten about the place, but then... And I came down 2nd Street and I saw the sign out front. Bob turned the car around and went to investigate. It's pretty bad when the light comes out this <laughs> Right away, they made him feel like family. Bridges of Hope needed somebody from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m to run the front desk. I remember the first night I woke up and I looked out there and uh, I saw him sitting out there and I just thought it was just some guy. Quickly, he became so much more. He's always there to lend an ear if somebody gets up to go to the restroom or can't sleep. Interesting, considering Bob will be the first to admit he did not do much listening to anybody before his beloved Dorothea died. Well, I wasn't a good listener. That's the problem. I learned that here. And that is not all he learned. It was such a, a different feeling. Rather than telling people what to do, listening to people and, and hearing their stories. And I had a mindset, like a lot of people do, people that are homeless are either drunks or uh, drug addicts. I really like the guy. He, he's easy to, to talk to. John Navarro's downward spiral started in 2010 when his wife died from an aneurysm. John said he did the best he could with his three young sons, but in 2013, it all fell apart. He's, just, he's really relatable, and uh, he has some really good advice. Being married to Dorothea for 56 years, Bob thought he had it all figured out. Well, I came here and thought I was going to be a help to you people. I said, you've been a help, more of a help to me than I think I've been to you. And she started crying. So I learned a little compassion. Bob realized making a difference comes with doing the little things in life. He beat me really, really badly. We were playing running. Things like playing cards in the middle of the night with his friends who cannot sleep. And as soon as I came in here, I knew uh, this is where God wanted me to be. <laughs> Excuse me. I asked Bob about the hand he has been dealt in life, and he was quick to show me. That's a royal straight flush. It does not get any better than that. He has no psychology degree or a master's in philosophy. And as for that official job title... We could call him Old Faithful because he's always sitting out there. <laughs> Bob said he is richer than he ever imagined, not because of what he has in his bank account, but what he found right here at Bridges of Hope. And never in my wildest dream would I think of being in the middle of Ohio at a shelter like this. For a man who is 82 years old, this is home. Everybody here is family, and he credits God and the love of his life, Dorothea. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Your wife gave you something. She definitely did. Yep. She was a great lady.
James Brown, New Center 7.